This animation demonstrates the procedure for an axonics basic trial, also known as a PNE or peripheral nerve evaluation. The patient should be lying prone with elevation under the hips to allow for a flattening of the sacrum. There should not be any rotation or tilting of the sacral area for ease of needle placement. Support is placed under the feet to allow the toes to be free to demonstrate motor responses. The ground pad is placed on the patient's leg and connected to the Axonics clinician programmer, which provides stimulation to test for responses. After prepping and draping the sacral area, the patient's midline is marked by identifying the spinous process. The level of S3 is identified by palpating the tip of the coccyx and measuring 9 cm cephalad. This is marked with a transverse line. The needle entry points are marked by measuring 2 cm lateral and 2 cm cephalad on both sides. Local anesthetic is used at both needle entry points. The foramen needle is advanced, keeping it parallel to the patient's midline and at an approximate 60 degree angle with the skin. Slight adjustments in the angle of the needle or needle entry point may be required to access the foramen. While adjusting the angle, always keep the needle parallel to the midline. Once the foramen is accessed, advance the foramen needle slightly. The needle test stimulation cable is clipped to the uninsulated portion of the foramen needle. The other end is connected to the clinician programmer. The clinician programmer is used to provide stimulation to test for patients' responses. A typical S3 sensory response is a tapping, tingling, or vibration in the genital, perineal, or rectal area. If tolerated by the patient, amplitude can be increased until a motor response is observed. The typical S3 motor response is a pulling in of the pelvic floor muscles, also referred to as a bellows response, and plantar flexion of the big toe. After an initial response is obtained, the needle should be advanced a half a centimeter and tested again. This is repeated for a total of two centimeters or until the response is lost. Then the needle is retracted slightly until response is evident again. This process ensures that the PNE lead is placed at the deepest location near the S3 nerve. The needle entry point for the contralateral side can be reassessed by measuring four centimeters lateral from the existing needle. The contralateral needle can be advanced, matching the angle of the existing needle. All testing should be repeated on the contralateral side. The stylets from both foramen needles are removed. The PNE lead has two markings to signify the length of the short three and a half inch needle and the long five inch needle. The PNE lead is advanced to the respective marker. The needle test stimulation cable is clipped to the uninsulated silver connector pin on the proximal end of the PNE lead. The clinician programmer is used to provide test stimulation to confirm sensory and motor responses. The PNE lead is stabilized with one hand while removing the foramen needle from the skin with the other. Before it is fully removed, confirm responses to ensure the PNE lead has not moved. Once responses are confirmed, the foramen needle is fully removed from the PNE lead, removing the lead stylet at the same time. The PNE lead placement process is repeated on the contralateral side. Each PNE lead is coiled above its respective insertion site and covered with gauze and a small tegaderm, leaving enough excess for the basic trial cable connection. The ground pad is connected to the basic trial cable and placed on the patient's skin near the lead dressings. The left PNE lead is then connected to the teal port labeled number one, and the right lead is connected to the purple port labeled number two. The basic trial cable is connected to the trial stimulator. The clinician programmer is then used to wirelessly check lead impedances. Excess basic trial cable should be coiled and taped down, taking care to provide adequate strain relief near all connections. The trial stimulator can be taped securely and comfortably to the patient, 
or worn around the waist in the provided belt.